Tesla has given us an update on its humanoid robot program, which is known as Tesla Bot or Optimus. New images of prototypes were quite impressive, making the project look less like a slideshow and increasingly like a potentially real product. When Elon Musk first announced the Tesla bot, many laughed it off as a sideshow or distraction to Tesla's more important mission to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. The CEO hyped it up by describing how much value it would create by fixing the labor crisis, but like Tesla's autonomous driving efforts, everyone can see the value of humanoid robots. The problem is, people having issues seeing Tesla making it a reality. It didn't help that the latest demo at Tesla AI Day last year was less than impressive. At the time, Tesla had a very early prototype that didn't look like much. It was barely able to walk around and wave to the crowd, that was about it. The company also had another more refined-looking prototype, but it wasn't even able to walk in time for the presentation. Tesla claimed to have a great opportunity to develop this humanoid robot because it could leverage a lot of existing hardware developed for its electric vehicles and software like its self-driving technology. But it wasn't clear how much effort was put into the project, even though Musk claimed it became a top priority at Tesla early last year. Now, at Tesla's shareholders meeting, Musk gave an update on Tesla Bot that included a lot of new footage of multiple prototypes. The footage includes five Tesla Optimus prototypes, which were seen performing simple tasks as well as walking around the office and in other Tesla facilities where Cybertrucks were were being built. The prototypes were walking slowly, but they appeared to be fairly stable. While the tasks that they were performing were not really impressive, Tesla appears to have made a lot of progress in developing the hands. Tesla also gave a glimpse at the robots detecting and memorizing their environment. Musk again claimed that the Optimus stuff is extremely underrated. And the CEO said that the demand could be as high as 10 to 20 billion units. He went as far as confidently predicting that Optimus will account for a majority of Tesla's long-term value. We will see what happens with uh, Optimus in the coming years. I am hopeful as a tech geek that they will refine this technology and it will be something that will help humanity in the future. However, due to recent things that have happened with Tesla and other Elon Musk companies, I remain a bit skeptical. And in a story brought to you by Carl's Jr., not really, that's just a nod to idiocracy. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, the large-scale immersive Disney World hotel experience with surprising ties to Star Wars canon, is setting sail for its final voyage in September. That's right, the two-day Star Wars-themed resort hotel experience first opened in March 2022 is now going to be closing. Uh, I do have a, a thought as to why that may be. The starting price point for a two-person weeknight experience was $4,800. And that went all the way up to $6,000 for a two-night premium experience. I'm guessing not a lot of people were booking this to uh, keep it up and running. And maybe try lowering the price and bringing in more people. More paying people at a lower price might still mean more profits for you. As for what motivated the decision to close the resort experience, we actually don't know. Disney Parks Global Public Relations Manager Charles Stovall told Polygon that it was just a business decision. Disney's always taking risks, he said. We've always been on the forefront of entertainment experiences, and we're constantly pushing the boundaries of creativity 
and innovation. And this was just one of the risks that we took. Stovall said that the Galactic Star Cruiser actors and staff would be relocated to other areas of the park in the lead-up to the experience's closure later this year. A lot of them were on the Disney College program, which is a very specific time limit, and they will be able to complete that program, he said. When asked whether the price for Galactic Star Cruiser was at all a factor in the business decision to shut down, Stovall said the price was commensurate with the value offered through the experience. The price was really reflective of all the costs to operate that experience. The entertainment, the food, the beverages, activities like lightsaber training and expedited park admission, all to deliver a VIP experience as immersive and unique as this one was. Again, I don't think that's an excuse to have such a high price at an entertainment destination. Disney routinely sells things for less than it costs them to bring more people in and makes it up on the back end with products and other things. They could have done that for this as well and kept it running. I'm a bit bitter because this is something that I wanted to go and check out eventually. As for what Disney intends to do with the site of Galactic Star Cruiser or the possibility of it returning at some point in the future, Stovall stated that Disney had no further announcements to share at this time, but nonetheless insisted that Star Wars would still play a vital role across Disney parks, including Galaxy's Edge. We just announced that Star Tours will be getting more scenes and characters within the next coming year, Stovall said, so we have plans for Star Wars, but nothing beyond what we've already announced today. Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser's last cruise is going to be on September 28th through the 30th. It looks like something straight out of Black Mirror. A cloud of tiny drones lifts off and weaves through a dense forest. They can remain in formation, sharing data and tracking a target, even if some of the swarm can't see it. It's all real, though. Researchers out of China developed the robots and detailed the process in the journal Science Robotics. The team says groups of autonomous drones like this could be ideal for mapping and disaster relief. But there are also clear use cases for military and surveillance operations. Drone aircraft are nothing new, and swarms of drones are even able to coordinate operations, perhaps to put on a neat little light show in the sky. However, that's a pre-programmed maneuver with no trees in the way. No human can manage a swarm of a dozen robots in real time. That's why the swarm designed at the Chinese university is fully autonomous. What's more, it doesn't rely on infrastructure like GPS. All the data the swarm needs to operate comes from the sensors on the robots themselves. The team says this is the first example of a swarm flying autonomously in an unstructured environment. Each drone in the cluster has a depth mapping camera, an altitude sensor, and a tiny NVIDIA Xavier NX computer. An algorithm integrates data from multiple drones, allowing them to maneuver through cluttered, unknown environments. The drones, which are compact enough to fit in your hand, can zip through openings as small as 30 centimeters. This is exactly the kind of technology that would help if you were, for example, searching for survivors in a natural disaster. The swarm has another interesting somewhat alarming capability. The designer showed the algorithm can follow a human target through the environment with incredible accuracy. If one robot loses sight of the target because they walk behind a tree, another will be able to maintain visual contact. With more development, the technology could make it virtually impossible for a person to evade the swarm. What happens then? is up to the operator of said drone swarm. The researchers showed the swarm can cope with minor interferences like a person picking up or nudging an individual drone, as well as the addition of new obstacles during flight. While the drone showed an incredible ability to adapt in a forest setting, 
a bustling urban environment might be more challenging. Compared to a forest, cities are much more active, and it's unclear how well the algorithm will cope with all that interference. The team hopes to test that in the near future, however. And of course, I'll keep you updated right here on your weekly tech update. 